Hey everybody, today's video is all about feeding your new puppy raw food. So we're going to go through a little bit of information on the amounts of raw food, how to vary the raw food, what to look for, a little bit about bones, freeze-dried raw, dehydrated raw, fresh frozen raw, and also we're going to talk about kibble as well. Hi, I'm Claire and today we are just going to try and make it so much easier for you to understand how to feed your puppy raw dog food. So let's get started with the frozen raw dog food. This is what everybody's most familiar with when they hear about raw dog food. This is a quarter pound of chicken, bones, organs, and some vegetables. And this is one of the offerings that we have on Curated Canines. And we choose this product mostly because it's really easy for people to see what a quarter pound is. It comes in a one pound package divided into four and you just snap them apart. Whereas this one, which is another product which we also carry and really like, this is a whole solid one pound block. And when you have a young puppy, you're not going to use the whole pound really quickly. So what we always advise everyone to do is let it thaw out just enough that you can cut and divide it into four. Now when you have raw dog food, the first thing you need to know is when you're getting it ready for your puppy, is that you have this food thawed out in the refrigerator. A one pound piece like this will usually take two whole days to thaw out properly. If you've thawed it out in the refrigerator, once it's thawed, then you can keep it in the fridge for up to three days. So even if you have a very small dog, you're going to have no problem using this up in the three days after it's thawed. If you thaw it on the counter because maybe you forgot to put it in the fridge or maybe it's still a little bit too frozen to work with, then it will be good in the fridge for two days after it's thawed. And even with two days, you're probably going to go through it all. But what I like to tell people is this particular one here, this is a pork dinner. So this is pork, organs, bones, fruits, and vegetables. And I like to have everybody have a nice balance of things. You'll read a lot and you'll hear a lot about raw dog food and how, oh, you have to do this way, or oh, only this way is right. And if you don't do it that way, then you're doing it all wrong. I think each individual way has some merits and each individual way has some detractions. So I like to use a variety of approaches, balance it and keep everything so that it's nice and steady, moderate, balance, no one extreme or the other. So there's um, the whole prey approach, which is taking the whole animal, which is completely ground up and you feed that. And if you feed that, as long as every single part of the animal is included, that's great. And that is pretty close to how an undomesticated dog would eat. Not how a domesticated dog eats though. There's a big difference between a domesticated dog and an undomesticated dog. And there's a lot of romance attached to the whole prey and the ancestral diet, all natural and all these buzzwords that you hear. The fact is dogs are domesticated. They've been domesticated for thousands of years now and their whole bodies have changed in order to go along with domestication. So while those notions are all very well and good and they do have some validity to them, try not to get all caught up in the buzzwords that uh, manufacturers use. So if you feed a whole prey diet, one of the things that's very low is uh, fruits and vegetables. The only way an, a dog can get fruits and vegetables from a whole prey is what that animal has eaten and then digested, and that's if they're eating their stomach contents. So they're eating the digested, already uh, processed fruits and vegetables. And another thing, if you're feeding fruits and vegetables that aren't, aren't organic or you don't know the source of them, then hmm, do they really have any much benefit in them? You want to know where your food is coming from. You want to be sure that the, the uh, proteins the, and the fruits and the vegetables have all come from a good source. So for example, if you buy something from Alberta, Alberta has a lack of selenium in their soil. So that's something you need to be aware of. 
Uh, when I used to be a cattle rancher, if I bought cattle from Alberta, they all had to be dealt with for that lack of selenium. And in their salt lick, they got extra selenium. So that's just something to be aware of. Many areas where they've been farmed over and over and over, the soil's been depleted, and so there's a lot of things that are lacking. If you have organic, it's a little bit better. There's no pesticides. Uh, the quality is usually a little bit higher, but that's no guarantee of any sort of perfection either. So just be aware of all of the sources. Uh, we try to uh, source everything as close to home as possible and uh, try to have everything British Columbia first, Western Canada second, Canadian third, and American fourth. And we don't use any raw products from the States. Um, it's uh, just not something that we are comfortable doing, but we do have a couple of other options that do come from the States. So what we like to do is use a variety of what are called dinners or meals because those have fruits and vegetables in them. And then we also rotate that through with, with a pure protein. And that is just the protein and the bones and the organs. So for example, one of the things that we really like to have our dogs enjoy is salmon or, or fish. Just, but uh, salmon is something that dogs really like. But if you give them a fish dinner, they'll eat it and they'll usually eat it for one meal and then they're like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm done with that. But if you give them the pure salmon, you can add that in to say something like this, where you add in maybe uh, 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 an eighth of a pound mixed in and they'll love it and they'll eat that for you a couple of times. So that makes it much easier for you to work with because it comes in a frozen one pound block like this. So you just wait until you can cut through it and then you can easily section it off into one eighth of a pound parts. So this is chicken, this is pork. Uh, this here is one of the bones that we'll talk about in a minute. That's duck, this is chicken wings and this here is a chicken product or uh, rather uh, yes it is a chicken product as well and then over here we have some of the alternatives to um, the format uh, the frozen raw format this is freeze-dried raw this is from the u.s this is actually freeze-dried rabbit so we have this in rabbit venison beef and lamb and this is freeze drying is a really good way to capture the benefits of raw, but have it a little bit more convenient if you're traveling uh, or if you're just in a situation where you don't have access to a freezer. This is very concentrated. Uh, for some dogs, this is too much fat uh, and too much protein, and it can lead to pancreatitis. So we always recommend using this in a you know just just in small amounts. Use it as a supplement to the frozen raw don't rely on this totally because it is so concentrated. Now, if you have a puppy and your puppy is say around 10 to 12 pounds, you're going to need to feed nine of these a day. And this is a very expensive way to feed. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind too, that the cost is higher for that. This is another form of uh, freeze dried raw product and this is just in a smaller format so when you have a little puppy these are really good you can use these actually for training treats uh, you can also use them on top of the frozen raw to give a little bit of a different flavor a little bit of a different texture because puppies and dogs all love to have variety in their food. They're just like you and I, we get bored with things. So if you have, say this is your puppy's meal, and usually a quarter pound like this is about right for a new puppy. And then you just take a couple of these and you sprinkle it on top. Then you've got some variety, some new texture, something different, and your puppy will love you for it and be more inclined to eat well. This is Smack. This is a dehydrated raw product. Uh, this is pork. And this is also highly concentrated. And it has fruits and vegetables, bones, organs, proteins. Everything is in it. And again, it's really handy if you're traveling. You feed very, very little of this. So for um, a puppy in the 10 to 15-ish pound range, you would feed about one cup of this a day. So it's really easy to get carried away and feed too much because it seems like so little. And this is the uh, kibble that we like. This is an American product, and this is made especially for puppies. It's a nice small size. It's um, a chicken product, 
and it's a grain-free product, but it isn't packed full of legumes, which can be problematic. And it, uh, it's sprayed with freeze-dried raw before it's cooked, but there's nothing raw in it at all. Uh, everything is baked uh, several times, so it's well cooked. You can hear some of our puppies in the background there. <laughs> We're sharing our studio with uh, a maternity ward today. Uh, so those are the various things. So what you can do with the kibble is the same as the small little bites here, is you can just sprinkle some on top or stir it through your puppy's food. That gives them a different texture, a different taste. Uh, generally, we find most of our dogs will spit the kibble out. They will eat the freeze-dried and they will eat the dehydrated. The kibble, they do tend to spit out. The kibble is also a really good thing to use as a low-value treat. When you're training your puppy, you're going to want to have a high value and a low value treat, and this is a really good low value treat. If you use puppy puzzles, this is something that's not bad to put in there. So we like to combine everything so that your puppy is exposed to all sorts of different types of raw food. We concentrate mostly on the frozen raw, and then we add these other things in just as little supplements here and there just as I said, to give them some variety and to give them a different taste and a different texture and keep them interested in their food. Now, one of the mistakes that people make most often when they're feeding puppies or even adult dogs is they feed them too much. So when they're very young, up to about five months of age, you want to feed them around five or 6% of their body weight. So just that's just rough guideline. Figure out what, what that number is, how many ounces that is, and then divide that among three meals. Once they're five, six months old, then they'll be cutting down to two meals a day, and then you'll want to feed them two meals a day for the rest of their lives. And once they get to be around six months old, you want to cut that back to around three or 4% of their body weight, and then as an adult, just 2%. So raw food seems like it might be expensive, but when you consider how much you have to feed compared to non-raw food, you'll realize that really it's not. For instance, with this kibble, for a 10 pound puppy, for them to have all the nutrition in a day, you need to feed your puppy three cups of this. That's masses of food. It's really hard for a puppy to consume three cups of this in a day. They will if they're really hungry, but to have them motivated enough to do that and really consume it is difficult. The other main difference between kibble and the freeze-dried, dehydrated, or frozen raw is that all of the nutrients, uh, the micronutrients your puppy needs, so all the minerals and the vitamins, they're all synthetic in kibble, whereas they're all in natural form when you eat the frozen, dehydrated, or freeze-dried raw. And that's a big difference. Because if you take a, a vitamin C capsule as a person, as opposed to eating an orange, you will have far less benefit from that vitamin C capsule that's synthetic than you will from the orange. Your body can't make use of the product anywhere near as well as it can in its natural state. Same thing for your dog. So you want to make sure you get those amounts and don't be concerned that it looks like a really little amount because don't forget this is all available energy for your dog as opposed to a traditional kibble which has a quite low available energy for your dog. That's the need to eat more. The other thing to remember when you're feeding your puppy raw food is they'll not drink very much water. When they eat a kibble or even the freeze dried and the dehydrated, they need to be able to have significant amount of water in their body to process that. So when they're eating the raw, the frozen raw, the water content is already in here. So they don't need much external sources of moisture to keep themselves hydrated. Whereas with the kibble, uh, they need a substantial amount in order to process the food within their body. And that's one of the drawbacks of a kibble. It, it is quite taxing on the system to have to process that amount of water and process that amount of food. Now, one thing you want to do is when you're rotating is not just rotate the brands and the proteins and go from with fruits and vegetables to without fruits and vegetables, but you're going to also want to replace some meals with bones. Now, this is a duck foot. Duck feet are terrific for adult dogs or for puppies. And for a puppy, this and a chicken wing tip, this is a meal. You've now replaced one meal. Indeed, for most puppies, this will be a meal and they may not even finish the whole foot in one set sitting. 
So if that's the case, you want to give this to your puppy for say 20 minutes, 30 minutes, let them chew away on it. And if they're not finished, just take it back. You can pop it back into the freezer for next time. And you want to feed this to your puppy frozen right out of the freezer. Or if anything, maybe it's sat out for about 15 minutes so it's a little bit pliable. This one's been out for about 15 minutes now. And this is about where I would like it for a young puppy. They can manage it, but it's still nice and cold. It's solid inside. And the reason for feeding it frozen is twofold. One, your dog or your puppy won't gulp it if it's frozen two they have to chew it more and that makes this terrific for teething puppies it exercises their jaws it soothes their sore gums it helps the teeth come through and it helps them not bite you as much when they're a puppy so a duck foot is a really good size the chicken feet are too big um, but the duck feet are a really good size Pork riblets are also a really good uh, choice for a young puppy. They're about this size and they have lots of nice sinew and meat and fat on them and they're great. And don't cut the fat off of the bones. The fat is one of the most important parts of the bone and one of the most important ways that dogs get their energy. Now these chicken wing tips, these are also really good for puppies. These, if you feed them three of them, that's a meal. Uh, what I usually do is I give them one or two for a snack during the day. I usually give them one about midday for a snack and then I give them one before they go to bed as a snack. This also is a great way to keep their poop regular and nice and firm. But you do have to watch. You can easily feed a dog too many bones. And you'll notice that if their poop starts to become gray, white, or really crumbly. You don't want it to be looking like that because that means you have too much bone content and it's getting too hard for your puppy to poop. So then you have to back off on the bone a bit. Uh, you can get frozen raw that doesn't have any bone in it. And then that way you can have the meat and then you can use the bones to provide the bone if you want. The bones provide so much nutrition for your puppy. So bones should comprise about 25% of their full diet and most of these types of uh, frozen raw products have 10 percent bone in them so you can just keep that in mind and go okay so we need to add about another 15 percent of bone during the day to our puppy's food so that they're getting the right proportion there and these little mini cubes here these are um, a mixed protein so uh, they will be chicken llama kangaroo beef and um, a chicken beef blend so they're all sorts of different things together they're great they give your puppy lots of variety in terms of proteins and lots of variety in terms of taste they're really easy to work with uh, they take just very little time to thaw so if you've forgotten or your puppy is still hungry, you can easily take a couple out and have them ready in no time. So they're a really good way to alternate uh, through as well. So switching between three products like this is easy to do. And then you've got your freeze dried and your dehydrated and a bit of kibble, your bones, lots of variety, lots of choice for your puppy. Just don't overfeed your puppy. So often we'll get emails saying, my dog stopped eating. I'm really worried my dog's not eating. I'm, I think that my dog's starving themselves. So first of all, your dog will never starve themselves. Even if they don't like something, if you keep giving it to them, they will eat it when they get hungry. But nine times out of 10, or more like 99 times out of 100, it's because the dog has been overfed. So when I say 6% of your dog's body weight, that's a general guideline. Some dogs are, are less active. Some dogs have a slower metabolism. Some dogs just simply eat less. Some dogs are really active. They're out and running or they're a higher energy type of personality and they have a really good appetite and they'll eat a bit more. Now we want our puppies to be nicely, not plump, but we want them to be rounded when they're growing, but we certainly don't want them to be fat. And we don't want them to be so skinny that they're not getting enough nutrition. So just like with people, a nice happy balance in between there. But if you find your puppy's not cleaning everything up in 10 minutes, you pick it up and you take it away. And then you give them that same thing for their next meal. And then if that happens more than once, cut back. Cut back by 10% and see how it goes after that. If you have problems repeatedly, 
then what you're doing is something is not quite right in terms of the amount. So then what I always suggest everybody does is they cut out a meal entirely. Do not feed anything, no treats, no food, nothing at all. Then go back to feeding your puppy. It's a little bit like a reset button. When dogs are older after six months, I'll tell people don't feed them anything for 24 hours. But with a puppy, it should just be one meal. So that's it. It's really not too hard to do. Um, we do have a really nice vegetable blend as well that um, the vegetables that come in, in these tend to be the same. There's lots of carrots, there's lots of apples. Carrots and apples both are high on the glycemic index and we don't want to overload our dogs with sugars because that can cause a buildup of yeast. So that's why we like you to switch through and use the pure proteins um, just as often as the ones that have the fruits and vegetables in, in them. This one as well, this product here comes in a chicken and tripe. Tripe is really smelly, um, but it's excellent as a digestive aid and dogs love it. That's another thing that we always recommend to people to do is add some tripe into their meals. So on the days when you don't use a complete dinner and you're using a pure protein or the chicken and tripe, we suggest that you add in one of our three pea vegetable blends. There's a yeast buster, a metabolic blend and a superfood blend. Those are all low index and yeast busting vegetables. So they're a light green mixture. Great product. It comes in a small flat pack. It thaws out in just minutes. You can thaw it out just in a sink of water in about five minutes. And you just need a tablespoon to, for about every half pound of food that you feed your dog. So when you have a puppy, a tablespoon a day will be just right. And you just mix it right in with the raw. And one final thing. Some puppies much prefer to eat their raw while it's still sem somewhat frozen. They like it to be icy. So if you find your dog is being a little hesitant about eating, try feeding it to them a little bit more frozen where you can just break it up with your fork. See if that does the trick. It seems counterintuitive when we're people as we prefer our food warm generally, but for dogs, many of them much prefer to eat their food cold, especially in the summer months. So that's it. I hope that's helped all of you. Uh, just keep that magic formula in mind around five, six percent for the first four or five months, then cut back to around four percent. And then when they're a year old, cut that back to two percent. And if they're not eating, it's probably because you're feeding them too much. And don't worry. Just don't worry. Relax. Make the whole experience of eating for your dog pleasant, quiet. Let them focus on eating their food have scheduled times when they eat. And remember, if you're training and you're using a lot of treats while you're training your dog, if you've had a training class, you probably need to cut back on the amount of food in their meals to compensate for that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, of course, please uh, ask away in the comments. Uh, if you have a chance, give us a thumbs up and we hope you subscribe to our channel and that you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.